today our topic is factor theorem so i hope you all have understood remainder theorem very well because factor theorem is based on that it is nothing very very simply interconnected things so first let me just uh, show you a small example you have 33 you are dividing this by 5 so what will happen if you divide 33 by 5 5 6 are 30 you will get a balance of 3 correct and if I divide 30 by 5 what will happen the same thing I think I showed in the previous example or previous video also when we were doing remainder theorem so here the remainder is 3 and here the remainder is 0 so in which case will you say that 5 is a factor of 3 30 when the remainder is 0 exactly so the same way we are going to deal this with polynomials also okay let me just uh, show you that how we will apply factor theorem so first if you have a polynomial p of x and I am going to divide this by x minus a. So what did we learn in the previous class? How do we uh, divide it? The remainder theorem. We say x minus a equal to 0 and then we find out x is equal to a. Isn't it? And we will substitute the value of x in the equation. Is that correct? So whatever then what we will do this p of x will become p of a is that correct and we will get a value here when we substitute it in the polynomial. So now if the value that you get in the right hand side is equal to 0 that means what x minus a is the factor if it is not equal to 0 it is giving a remainder that means x minus a is not a factor that's it very simple we will do some questions because only through questions it is easy to understand this uh, kind of uh, theorems right so let us just see and do you have to find out if there is a polynomial x cube minus 3x square plus 4x minus 12 okay this is your polynomial now what do you have to do you have to find out if x minus 3 is a factor of this polynomial or no so how will you do first step will be to find what is x x minus 3 equal to 0 so how much is x x is equal to 3 so we will just go ahead and substitute in this equation everything with x the value of x so x will become 3 right so this becomes 3 and this becomes 3 so what are we getting 3 raised to 3 3 cube is 27 3 square is 9 9 into 3 is 27 ok fine plus 12 minus 12 yay what are we getting we are getting a 0 right we are getting a 0 so in the beginning this was my p of x right when I substituted it become p of 3 so p of 3 is equal to 0 so what do we understand from this x minus 3 is a factor of the given polynomial pretty simple okay now guys we have to find the value of a variable so here what is happening is we have to find the value of a if x minus a is a factor of x cube minus a square x plus x plus 2 okay so what is the question the question is a x minus a is the factor of this polynomial 
so you have to find the value of a so what do we understand if x minus a is a factor the remainder should be 0 is that correct ok so here what is the value of x x will be equal to a so I can say p of a equal to a cube minus what a square into a plus a plus 2 but what is my p of a because this is a factor because this is a factor my p of a is equal to 0 exactly so a cube minus a cube 0 a plus 2 so a is equal to how much minus 2 correct right ok fine that's it so guys let's do one question uh, which is little twisted but the concept remains same we have learned factor theorem so we will be applying this uh, those concepts here the question is little twisted that's it but you can do it yourself so please try to do it yourself and afterwards you check but you have to think okay okay so let us do the question okay here you go it is if x minus 2 and x minus half these two are the factors these two are the factors of a polynomial which polynomial p x square plus 5 x plus r what you have to show you have to show that p is equal to r this you have to show so how will you go about it let's start doing first i will take the first factor x minus 2 so according to this what will happen x will be equal to 2 i am going to substitute the value of x in this particular polynomial p x raised to 2 plus 5 into x which is 2 plus r it will be equal to 0 because x minus 2 is a factor that means remainder will be 0 so i will get 4 p plus 10 5 into 2 is 10 plus r equal to 0 so 4p plus r will be equal to minus 10 correct so this is my first equation 4p plus r equal to minus 10 is my first equation now I have to do with the second factor which is x minus 1 by 2 so let us just remember that keep that in our mind and do the second portion x minus 1 by 2 so my x will be equal to 1 by 2 I am going to substitute that in the polynomial value of x so p 1 by 2 square plus 5 into 1 by 2 plus r will be equal to 0 so what will I get p by 4 plus 5 by 2 plus r equal to 0 now I will take LCM so it will become p plus 10 plus 4 r equal to 0 correct now what will happen p plus 4 r will be equal to minus 10 did you see something in the first equation we had 4 p plus r equal to minus 10 and here we have p plus 4 r equal to minus 10 that means RHS of both the equations are equal I can write it here if you want 4 p plus r equal to minus 10 see RHS is equal so what can we do we can equate the left hand sides LHS is yeah we can do that we can say p plus 4 r equal to 4 p plus r if I move r's to one place and p's to one place what will happen see let us see minus 3 p equal to minus 3 r minus 3 minus 3 cancel p is equal to r that's it we proved it right 
Isn't it easy? I am sure you would have done. At least half of it you would have tried. Right? If you like watching this video, please click on the like button. No, Don't forget. One more question that we can get is using fact, uh, factor theorem, you have to factorize x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6. Here they are not giving you a factor. They are saying using factor theorem, you have to factorize this. So how will you do that? The first step is to find out what is the constant. The constant is minus 6. Now you have to go ahead and find the factors of your minus 6. What are the factors of minus 6? Yeah, we know that it comes in the table of 1. We can say plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. Right? 6 comes in all of these tables, isn't it? So 6 has 4 factors. Is that correct? Perfect. And what is the degree here? Degree is 3. That means how many zeros can this polynomial have? Come on, we have discussed that earlier. This polynomial can have 3 zeros, isn't it? So now we have to find those 3 zeros from these values. So what I will do is, first let me take this 1. We will take 1 and substitute in place of x, 1 cube minus 6 into 1 square plus 11 into 1 minus 6. So 1 minus 6 plus 11 minus 6. So how much are you getting? 12 minus 12 we will get which is 0. It is coming to 0. That means what? X minus 1 is a factor. Why? Because I substituted 1 here in place of X. So what does that mean? X minus 1 is a factor. Correct? Right. Now the next one is 2. Let me try with 2. Do you think x minus 2 can be a factor? Because then I will have to substitute the value of 2 in the equation. Let us try that. We will go ahead and substitute it with 2. So 2 cube minus 6 into 2 square plus 11 into 2 minus 6. 8 minus 2 to the 4. 6 into 4 is equal to 24 plus 22 minus 6. How much are you getting? Minus 16 plus how much? 22 minus 6 which is 12 minus 22 plus 22. How much is it coming? 0. So again x minus 2 is also a factor. Now we can go ahead and see if x minus 3 is a factor. Always it's not that we will get 0 only because this is a trial method. Sometimes we will get a value then we will have to leave this and go to another factor. Here I don't know it's working. Let us see x minus 3. We will just substitute the value of 3 and see how much we are getting. 11 into 3 minus 6, 3 cube is equal to 27 minus 9 into 6 is how much? 54 plus 33 minus 6, right? Okay, so what is it? 54 minus 27, 7 and 2, 27 minus 27 plus 33 minus 6. How much is it? 27. See, this is also giving you 0. So, this is the method to factorize using factor theorem when the factor is not given. Only thing is, you will look at the constant, you will find the factors, apply that and we will see if it, if it is giving you the remainder as 0. If it is coming as 0, that means it is a factor. Good going. Factor theorem is over. Now let us see another question. That is also factorization but it is a pretty lengthy question. Okay. x cube plus 13x square plus 32x plus 20. 
they are asking you to factorize this when it is given x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. So how will you do that? It's a long one. You know when we look at itself we know it's little longer. Isn't it? We need to find the uh, we need to find the zeros. But here the polynomial's degree is 3. So we need to find 3 zeros. How will we go ahead and find that? When you get a question like this, the first thing we have learnt the long division method. We will go ahead and divide it using x plus 2. Right? You remember how we did that? Just like that x square I will get x cube. I am not explaining this again because it will take long time. I have already explained it. You can just go ahead and check it in the previous video. Okay guys because it will take a long time otherwise we have to finish middle term splitting also. So here I am getting this plus 22x and I will change the sign this and this will go and I will get 10x plus 20 okay now I will multiply with plus 10 so I will get 10x plus 20 and everything will get cancelled it is getting 0 okay so now what happened see this is a factor I got it hmm? but I am getting a quotient here what is that x square plus 11x plus 10 now in these kind of questions my quotient is going to play the game what am I going to do with the quotient let me remove the long division guys please do try to do this question later ok this is x square plus 11x plus 10 we are going to do middle term splitting factorization you remember in 8th grade you used to do algebraic factorization where you used to get two factors if you multiply both of them you should be getting this isn't it now if 6 the factor is 2 and 3 if you multiply 2 and 3 you will get 6 so that's how when we do the middle term splitting we will get two values in the parenthesis in the terms that will be our other two factors let us find that so how do we do that for that we will multiply 10 and x square isn't it so 10 and x square becomes 10 x square now what is the next step I need to find the factors of 10 x square what can be the factors 5 x into 2 x right then what again 10 x into 1 x isn't it so that is done now what is the next step when I add or subtract these two factors I should get 11x add or subtract so if I do 5x plus 7x of 2x I am getting 7x I am not getting 11x right so here I will go ahead and I will use 10x and 1x right let me use that here it is all positive so I don't have to worry about the signs I'll take x common it will become x plus 1 and here I will take 10 as common it will become x plus 1 so my other factors are x plus 1 x plus 10 so for the polynomial that we were doing in the beginning the three zeros are x plus 2, x plus 10 and x plus 1. Clear? When you get a polynomial with the degree greater than 2, you will most probably go for doing it like this. Because if it is 3, definitely you need three zeros. So this is the method to follow. Clear? We will do one more factorization using a negative term. Right? Let us see how to do that. Our question is 3z square minus 19z plus 30. Why I am doing a negative uh, example is just to make sure that you understand how to use the signs when we are factorizing. 
it sh it's not that complicated but we have to give little bit of attention to that so 3z square into 30 how much it will give you 90z square so I need to find the factors of 90z square it's very easy we get 3z into 30z I will get 90 if I do 10z into 9z I will get 90 like that I can go on but after product what is the next step I should select these two fa factors of 90 and see if I plus or minus will I get minus 19 I have to get negative 19 so I will write 3z square here and I will write 30 here just to make my life simpler 10 plus 9 is what 10 plus 9 is 19 okay so I will write here but then do you see here there is a minus sign so that means my result should be negative so where will I have to put the negative sign also remember the product is also positive it is positive 90 so I will have to make sure my both numbers are negative because minus 10 into minus 9 will give you positive 90 right minus 10 minus 9 will give me minus 19 so the sign plays a very important role then I will take these two and I will take these two in this what is common z is common nothing else is common ok so 3z minus 10 ok here what is common 3 is common 3z what should I get 3 into whatever I do I should get 30 so 3 into 10 but I should get positive 30 so negative 3 into negative 10 right so do you see in both the parentheses I have the same number so that comes out it is common and whatever is left that comes in another bracket factors factorization simple middle term splitting very simple right so I think by using all this till exercise 2.4 will be very very easy for you please try to implement all this and try to do it and whatever extra question I give that also you try yourself in the next video we will be finish it, finishing off polynomials chapter with the identities okay if you like this video please go ahead like it subscribe it and share it with your friends Okay, have a nice day.